This is video number one for Excel Module 3 in the Shelley Cashman book on Office 365. The actual instructions start on page 3-5. I've already opened up a blank spreadsheet and we want to start with putting a title in A1. Before I do this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm just going to zoom uh, holding the control key down and using the wheel on the mouse to zoom in. You can also go down to the slider down here and change the zoom factor as well. So in A1, we want to type in our title and hit enter. And on A2, we want to type in six month financial projection. That'll be our subtitle and hit enter. And we want to apply the slice theme to the workbook. So themes are going to be on our page layout tab up here, way over here on the left. And they do show the labels here, so we should be able to find slice fairly easily. And there it is, the first one in the third row. Go ahead and select that. Notice our font changes, and as we start doing some other things, we'll see that our color palette has changed as well. If you go back to the Home tab and look at the color palette down here, this is the color palette for the slice theme. Now let's go to the top of page 3-6. We're going to rotate some text. So we want to go to cell B3. Click on B3. We're going to start typing in some names of months. So we're going to type in January. Hit Enter. Get the up arrow to go back up and reselect it. We're going to rotate this. And rotation is up here in the alignment group. And there's a button here that will do rotation. And it'll do like plus and minus 45 degrees, plus and minus 90 degrees. We want something a little more precise than that. So we can't use one of the default options here. So just click off of that. We need to go to the dialog box launcher for the, for the alignment group right here. So click on the dialog box launcher. We get six tabs up here. One of them is alignment. If you haven't selected alignment, go ahead and click on it. And over here, we can specify the alignment. We can rotate and you can either rotate by just taking the mouse and dragging this line here. Or the alternative is you can go down here and specify precisely what you want. We want 75, so we're just gonna type that in and hit enter. And January has been rotated 75 degrees. Next, we're going to look at a really neat feature of Excel called Autofill. If you type in the name of a month and you select that cell and go to the lower right-hand corner, like I'm doing right now to get your fill handle, and you click and drag, we're going to do five more cells all the way to column G and let go. It knows enough to fill in the rest of the months. You don't have to start with January. You can type in any month name that you want to, and you can click and drag, and it doesn't have to be across. You can also click and drag down. It also recognizes three letter names for months. You could type in J-A-N and click and drag and it would fill in three letter abbreviations for the rest of the months as well. If you go beyond 12, it just does exactly what you'd expect it to do and starts over again. Now at the bottom of page 3-7, we want to select cell H3, type the word total, and either tab or hit the right arrow key to slide over to column I. Column I, we want to type in the word chart. And this is one of those cases where Excel tries to figure out what you want because we've rotated the other cells here. It assumes that we want those to be rotated the same amount. Sometimes it guesses right, sometimes it guesses wrong. This time it guessed right. If you turn to page 3-8, there's a bunch of descriptions of things that you can do with autofill. I'll let you read that on your own. We'll skip over to page 3-9 and we're gonna change some column widths. So we want to change the width of column A. We want to make it quite a bit wider. We don't even have to select it. We can just go between the columns up here at the top. When you get your two-headed arrow, we're going to click and drag it until we get to 38.5. That's a pretty wide column. Then we want columns B through G to be the same. So those are our six months. We want all those to be 15. Let's click and drag. Right now they're eight. It's pretty touchy there. You've almost got to get it exactly to the pixel. And an alternative is, if you'd rather not do that, just right click on the selection, go to column width, and in the box here, you can type in exactly what you want. So that might be a little bit easier than trying to hit a particular pixel when you're dragging the mouse. Go ahead and click on OK. Now we're going to go to column H. We're going to set the width of column H to 18. And I'm going to zoom back out a little bit here so we can see column H on the screen now as well as the rest of it. 
Let's click here and drag. We want that to be 18. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. Now let's flip over to page 3-10. We're going to enter some row titles. So we're going to start in A4. And we're just going to type in the titles that appear in figure 3-11 on page 3-10. So you may want to pause the video while you type them in. I'm going to type them in now as well. Okay, after you've typed everything in, your spreadsheet should look like this. Now we've got two categories here, one called revenue, one called expenses. And these are subordinate to revenue and expenses. So what we want to do is we want to indent them to indicate that. So let's select what's in A5. And then we do a non-adjacent selection, so you have to hold the control key down. So click and drag through from bonus through miscellaneous. We're going to go to our alignment group up here, and we've got an option here that says increase indent. So we will indent those just a little bit to indicate they're subordinate to their titles. Let's go ahead and click on that. And they get indented a little bit. You can do that more than once if you want to, if you think it looks better if you indent it a little bit further. So that's where you go to indent, and the other button here is also to go back in the other direction. So select cell A18 to finish entering the row titles and deselect the current cell. So let's go to A18 down here. Now we're at the top of page 3-11. Number one says with cell A18 selected, type what if assumptions. Hit enter. Now we're going to select the range A9 to A13. We're going to copy those. You can either go up here and choose copy, or the easy way is just do a control C from the keyboard. Now those just got copied to the clipboard, and we can paste them in. We're going to go down to cell A19, flip over to page 3-12, and we're going to paste them in. So you can either go up here and click on paste, or the easy way is just do a control V. So now we should have the same text down here that we have up here. To get rid of the dancing line around our selection, just hit the escape key. There are a lot of options for paste, and those are described on page 3-13. It's worth your while to go over these and check them out because some of them are really, really useful. Now we're going to go to the bottom of page 3-13, actually the top of page 3-14, inserting and deleting cells in a worksheet. So sometimes after you've created a worksheet, you may realize that you need to insert a row or insert a column. And we are going to go to row 20. We're going to right click and we're going to choose insert. It'll insert one there and it will push everything down. The text we want in here is going to be sales revenue for bonus. And Excel was smart enough to leave that indented just like the cell above and the cell below. So we'll just leave that. Now let's go to the top of page 3 15. Right click row heading 19. So row heading 19. Choose Insert again. This little icon will appear below. Click on it. And since we have different formatting above and below, we have to tell it which one we want. And we want it to do the same as the one below. So let's choose Format Same as Below. It will indent that uh, the way we want it to be indented. And now we're going to type in our text, Margin, and hit Enter. And number four on page 3-15 says we want to save this using the name SC Excel 3 Manola. So let's go up here and do a file and do a save as. Put this wherever you want to. Click on the Browse button to go to the correct location. I'm going to put mine on my desktop as always. Our name is going to be SC for Shelly Cashman, underscore EX for Excel, underscore 3 for Module 3, underscore Manola. It'll save it as an Excel workbook. Go ahead and click on Save. And after it saves, it'll take us back into our document. Now let's go to the top of page 3-16. Uh, it talks about inserting rows and inserting columns, but it doesn't actually do that for you. And you can also delete columns and rows. If I want to delete something here, just right click and choose Delete. It'll delete that column. Everything to the right will slide over one column to the left. 
Same thing with the row over here, works exactly the same way. Just right click on the row number, choose delete, and everything below it will move up. Let's go to the top of page 3-17. Number one says enter the following values using format symbols to apply number formatting. So you can format the numbers as you type them in by typing in decimal places and percent signs and dollar signs and commas. So we're going to do that. And if you do that, you don't have to go up here and format it afterwards. It's not a big deal. It might save you a little bit of time. So for margin down here under January, we want to type in 81.25%. Five comma zero 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 point zero zero hit enter. So I type those numbers in with the appropriate commas and digits to the right of the decimal point and percent signs if necessary. And we have formatted everything as we typed it in. There's no need to go up here and apply formatting. Now we're at the bottom of page 3-17. It says if necessary display the home tab we should still be on the home tab we want to go to cell b4 so let's scroll up here so we're doing revenue for january and we want to enter the following numbers across for the six months after you've typed in those six numbers let's go to column h go to cell h4 our total cell. Let's click on auto sum up here. If you do auto sum to the right of a row of numbers, it tries to sum those numbers for us. Double check the formula, make sure it really is highlighting all those numbers. And it says sum from B4 to G4. And then you can hit enter. Now let's flip over to page 3 18. We're going to go to cell H1. We're going to insert a function here name of the function we want is now so there's a couple of ways to insert a function here you can go to the insert function button you can go to the formulas tab up here we want a date and time function the function we want is the function called now we can select it that way we get a little help here that says returns the current date and time format as a date and time this function takes no arguments this is one of two functions that i know of in excel where there are no arguments, but you still have to put the empty parentheses in. Go ahead and click on OK, and it will enter the current date and the current time. Now let's go to the top of page 3-19. Let's right click on our date, select format cells from the menu, click the number tab, if it's not already selected. We want the date category, and what we want to select is the third one down from the top here, 2012-3-14 go ahead and click on OK. We're going to double click on the border between H and I to make that column just as wide as it needs to be. Go ahead and save this. And the next section is on absolute versus relative addressing. This is a good place to stop and we'll pick up with video number two on page 3-20.